A lot of people in Flight Rising are going to judge you by the organization of your dragon lair. Rose6060 asked me to go over how I organize my dragon lair. Popular methods of dragon lair organization include by mates and by color. User Crack6 organizes their lair by dragon mates, going male, female, male, female. I don't organize my dragons by mates because I'm always rotating the mates of my dragons to get more genetically diverse offspring. Flight Rising user V. Veventim organizes his dragon lair by color. The colors range from the dark violets to the light reds and are beautiful to check out if you're looking for inspiration. The reason why I don't organize my dragons by color is because it would be a lot of platinum in front of platinum in front of silver. These are just the forms of organization that I see the most often. How do you organize your dragon lair? How would you like to organize it? And what kind of challenges do you face to maintain this level of dragon organization? I've experimented with a few different ways of lair organization. The way that I've resolved to do it is by managing it the exact same way that I manage my dragon spreadsheet, which is by breed by date. This is just kind of like a check and balance system for me. Even though it's mostly by breed by date, that doesn't mean that's the only thing going on in my lair. Usually the dragons that end up at the very first slots on my first page are my Colosseum dragons and my breeding project dragons because they move the least. So they will end up at the top of my spreadsheets and the first slots of my lair. After that comes the general populace of my lair, which are the dragons that'll probably only stay around for two or three breeding cycles. That makes up the majority of my lair. About six pages is made up of dragons who will only breed two or three times. Then at the end of page seven and throughout the top of page eight, we get my exaltling dragons. The name that I'm using to track my exaltlings now is Zikvik. Z-Y-K, V-Y-K, and so they take up the portion of my lair immediately after just the general populace. And after the exaltlings, I just have my limbo area where I put the parents that are going to be exalted, the dragons I'm trying to sell, and dragons that I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do with. I see many users using a lair organizational structure that kind of mirrors this, where you have your general population, and then at the end you have the exaltlings, the parents that you will exalt, and the babies that you're trying to sell. At least that's what I see the most often. Where do you put the parents you're going to get rid of, the dragons you're going to exalt, or the dragons that you're selling in your lair? I don't take my dragon lair organization very seriously. It's something that I might forget to do for a couple of days. I know a lot of other people really take it to heart, and if you're doing lair reviews, people spend a lot of time specifically organizing their dragons. In other major news on Flight Rising, a new Coliseum venue was released, the Rain Song jungle. It is a level 19 venue, which means that the boreal wood is now a level 20 venue. From the past, it was a 19 to 20, but now it's just 20, and the rain song jungle is filling that niche of the 19. With this new venue, we get 12 new familiars, and there is one for each flight. The new Silver Beast familiars look strangely like a specific yeti from another Calcium venue. What is your favorite new familiar that was introduced in this venue? The Dragon Chick is now doing Flight Rising lair reviews on her YouTube channel. I just wanted to go ahead and give her a feature right here and route you guys to her if you didn't know that this is happening. Just please go ahead and check out her channel. I think there's a lot of room for growth for Flight Rising on YouTube and I really want to see more of you guys involved. I also just wanted to thank everybody for commenting on my 200 subscribers video. I sent out the prizes today for that raffle that I held. In other community mentions, Dana Susfa, otherwise known as our friend Rose6060, commented on my dragon naming strategies video saying that she usually chooses one of the colors or genes, goes to Google Translate, and finds a good language for the color gene to sound more like a name. I've heard of other people on Flight Rising following similar strategies of using different languages for cool names for their dragons. In the not so far future, I'm going to make another video about dragon naming strategies because I've changed my naming conventions on Flight Rising a bit, and I just kind of want to share with you guys that hierarchy that I've developed. Let me know how you name your dragons or how you decide it or how that plays into the larger lair organization.
of your dragon lair. In other very important Flight Rising news, there will be a registration window on May 18th. So if you're watching this video because you're interested in actually playing Flight Rising, go ahead and sign up on May 18th. My username is Raffle, and I would love it if you put me down as your referral. If you want to learn more about Flight Rising, and you already play or whatever, I do have a Flight Rising playlist full of videos that I've made about Flight Rising, and you can check that out here. Or in a specific reference, I am doing a project on Flight Rising that's probably going to take me a year just to create one dragon. Learn how and why in this video about my one big family breeding project. Or if you're like me and you started out on Neopets, there are once again signs of life on Neopets. The Neo Neopets team released news confirming that all of our favorite Altador Cup Players will be returning this year for the Altador Cup 10. Learn more about it by watching this video here. As always, please like if you like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like it. Thanks for watching. Bye!